Pollock and Wilderland, and I'm here to tell you about how this summer we're gonna have one of our most important adventures yet. But first, I'm gonna talk about something, what one of my biggest passions is endangered species. Now, there's tons of endangered species, so it's super difficult to pick out five of the most important to me. And I have done that. So, the first one I'm gonna tell you about is the black-footed ferret. They are a flagship species, which means if they die, there's 130 or so other plants and creatures that depend on them, and those plants and creatures will be highly affected by the extinction of the black-footed ferret. Right now, there are less than 2% of the original population of black-footed ferret on Earth right now. Like, that's crazy. That's a major decline in population of black-footed ferrets. And like my little ferret, he doesn't have black feet like a black footed ferret because he's from Europe, but like he's a ferret. I love ferrets. They're adorable little loving creatures that steal your socks and bite your toes. Like, ugh, why would you not want any more of those on earth? They're so adorable and fuzzy and fantastic. Now the next one I'm going to tell you about is the sea turtle. They're really amazing creatures. They're beautiful. Uh, there's tons of different sizes that range vary and on the beaches of the Gulf of Mexico there's a very endangered one called the olive ridley sea turtle but in general sea turtles almost every single species is endangered and every single species of sea turtles in US waters is considered endangered. The sea turtle is very important to the aquatic environment because it feeds on something called seagrass and seagrass is very important to other forms of species and when seagrass is eaten by manatees and sea turtles it keeps it healthy because it needs to be trimmed down otherwise it grows all long and it ends up dying but seagrass is high breeding grounds for all sorts of different types of crustaceans and little fish and big fish and everything so those fish are being affected as well their population is decreasing because they have no breeding grounds. They end up laying their eggs in the middle of the ocean and they'll die very quickly because they are unprotected. And a lot of these fish are fish that are caught by humans for human consumption. So it's affecting the humans as well, like majorly. Like we have no more of these little fish to catch because they're on the endangered list and we aren't allowed to catch them. But it's a chain reaction from the sea turtle population declining, so it ends up affecting us in the long run. Now, the next one I'm going to tell you about is the kangaroo. And as you saw in my Australia special, the kangaroo is hunted for pet meat, um, eaten by humans, its pelts are used um, to become decorations, all sorts of horrible stuff. But these guys are important because, again, tons of other species depend on them. Um, the types of native grasses that they eat need to be um, eaten and pooped out by the kangaroo in order to stay healthy and regenerate all over Australia. And they are depended on to help like, um, prevent wildfires because they'll go and eat the grasses which will keep the grasses healthy and green so they will not dry up and they will not catch on fire and burn all sorts of stuff. So in the end it'll end up affecting you. And when you think of the kangaroo, it all comes down to the passenger pigeon. There were millions and millions of these passenger pigeons everywhere. But in just a hundred years, they went to zero passenger pigeons left on Earth. Like, no more passenger pigeons. You couldn't find one anywhere on Earth. If you took a giant net and went throughout the entire Earth, you'd have no passenger pigeons in that net. And that's because they were thought of as a pest, as is the kangaroo in Australia right now. So they were hunted, uh, there was lots of habitat for them, and their population went down so fast because they were thought of as a pest. People were like, ah, we need to get rid of this because there's millions and millions of them everywhere. Uh, they don't have to worry about them going extinct because there's so many. No, there's zero left right now in just 100 years. Like, that's crazy. The next animal that I'm going to tell you about is the rhino. And the rhino is a very important one to me. As you've seen in my South African special, I went and saw all sorts of beautiful rhino and they are hunted by poachers because um, people mainly in Asia have thoughts in their head that the rhino horn is used for medicinal purposes and they think it has medicinal values, but actually it has the amount of medicinal values that is in your fingernails, which is zero. Rhino have been around for over 40 million years. They've been thriving, they've been okay, until the turn of the 19th century. 
Um, before the 19th century, there were millions and millions of rhinos, and today there are less than 28,000 rhinos on Earth, which is a huge impact on the rhino population. Um, the rhino help all sorts of other creatures. Um, they eat grasses that will help uh, the grasses stay healthy. Tons of birds and little creatures like that land on them and peck off ticks and use that as their food source, depend on them. So if the rhino go away, it's gonna affect all sorts of other species. Now the last species that is going in danger that I'm gonna tell you about is children in nature. Now you're thinking, Alec, Children in nature isn't some animal that's running around out there being shot by poachers or getting disease that's the population is being driven into the ground. Well, do you, how many kids do you know out there that are like me, that go outside regularly, uh, love playing outside, and don't sit inside all day? That's right, there's not that many. There was a recent survey taken and they asked tons of adults, how many of you remember climbing trees as children? or? maybe not as children, maybe as older adults or anything. How many of you in general remember climbing trees? 60% said they remembered climbing trees. Now, they asked tons of kids in schools and stuff and the results were drastically different. Only 20% remember climbing trees. Like, what's with that? It was like a natural instinct for me to go shoot up a tree when I was a little kid. They should be outside climbing trees right now. And do you know the reason for the lack of kids outdoors. Since technology was made, whether it's video games, uh, TVs, everything, computers, there have been less and less kids and adults going outside. And that results in um, childhood obesity, diabetes, and all sorts of stuff from not getting outside because there are things that you need outside like the vitamins vitamin D from the Sun and you need to stay fit by going outside climbing trees running around all sorts of stuff so when you aren't getting outside and you're sitting inside playing video ga video games all day you are getting worse health as well as the attention on nature is declining like there's endangered species that kids like me are learning about and stuff because it's an interest to us because we love playing outside. And when we grow up, we will most likely help those species to go back up, their populations will fly back up in the future because kids are the future. We need kids outside to know all sorts of stuff about nature and that can help this planet uh, be like it used to be. Take away all the litter, um, help the populations to fly up, plant trees, all sorts of stuff. But if kids are mostly interested in being uh, video, video game creators, being movie stars on TV, all sorts of stuff like that, then there's not going to be as many people paying attention to the outdoors, being zoologists, um, just helping nature in general. So we need to get kids outside. So that's my Alec in Wilderland, five most endangered species that are most important to me. There's tons of other endangered species out, though, out there, but those are the five most endangered species that stuck out to me. So, this summer, Alec and Wilderland is going mobile. You heard it right here, folks. Alec and Wilderland is going mobile. We're gonna be on the move, telling all sorts of people across America about these five things that are very important to me, and we'll help raise awareness of these creatures and how to help them. As you know, I am taking you with me, and I'm gonna need your help to help get us there. This isn't some little, little thing where we're gonna go from one little state and this state and tell a few people at like the gas station or something about this. No, we're gonna go all the way up here from Washington State, all the way down, tons of miles, all the way down to Key West, Florida. Smoky Mountains, we're gonna go Yellowstone National Park, all these places, tell all these billions and trillions of people about all the stuff that we need to preserve these five things we're gonna hand out these awesome packets and inform all these people and we're gonna be filming episodes and getting footage along the way camping staying at different spots all around the US so one awesome thing that you guys have asked for that I'm gonna be doing along the way is I'm gonna upload almost every other day or so daily blogs of what I'm up to uh, just give you a behind-the-scenes scoop upload it onto YouTube so it won't be like a huge episode but it, it'll just be like a cool little blog be like hey what's up you guys so I'm at Yellowstone National Park oh 
Oh, there's a wolf. How cool, you guys. Oh, oh, there's a big spider. Oh, it bit me. Oh, no. Stuff like that. Like, just show you all these cool little things, tell you awesome stories. Just cool little interesting things that'll keep you guys entertained along the way. Now for the awesomest, most pugtastic, most special part of all of this. Are you guys ready? Not only are we gonna travel across the United States to give you guys all sorts of amazing footage, create awareness about these creatures that need to be helped, meet tons and tons of people, explore all new areas around everywhere, but in the end, we are going to present you with a feature film called Stay Wild. Like, it'll tell you all the amazing, cool stuff of what it's like to get outside, explore nature, and what it's like to film and be in a show like this. And hopefully, it'll help inspire other people to get outside, go exploring, and help endangered animals. So, if you guys want to find out more about this awesome adventure that we will be going on together, just slide over to the Indiegogo page and check out all sorts of cool information, and tell you all the newest scoops on this stuff and there will be all sorts of awesome perks. Personally, my favorite one is adopting Alex. So thank you guys so much. I really think this is going to turn out huge and be super awesome and get ready for the wildest adventure yet.